Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making some changes to the game in order to get ready for our edit modes where we can uh, move objects around in the level. Okay, first off, let's go into um, go into our code in the AI cam. So let's open that up. Aim cam, <clears throat> and there's a few functions that I want to add because of some of the code that we're going to add later. So let's just jump in here. Let's call one of these. We're going to call uh, aiming, and we'll call the other one editing. And then the last one we're going to call turn ends. Okay, what these are, these are going to be Boolean functions, so they're going to return a Boolean value, and it's basically, I want to know when I'm in aiming mode, I want to know when I'm in editing mode, or I want to know when the turn ends. Previously, we've been relying on the Boolean values and just kind of, you know, plugging in uh, these convoluted um, Boolean expressions to see if we're in one of these modes. Um, I'd like to make the code a lot more readable. Um, I'm a firm believer in um, making the code re as readable as possible without throwing in a whole bunch of extra comments and things like that. Um, comments are definitely important when we need to explain a certain piece of code, but hopefully things are just are readable enough that you don't have to go in and do that. So let me go ahead and paste this code in here for the aiming. All right. So what we're doing here is um, we're just saying, okay, if the ball is not in overhead mode and it's the ball is not in play, then we're going to return true. That means that we're in aiming mode. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So we'll save that and compile. Okay, let's jump over to the editing. This one is going to be this code right here. So if we're in overhead mode and the ball is not in play, then return true, otherwise return false. So that's how we know that we are in editing mode um, where we can move objects around. And the last thing is we're going to go with um, turn ends. And this one is going to be paste that code in. So if the ball is idle and the ball is also in play, then that means the turn has just ended. So we're going to return true. else we're going to return false okay and compile okay the next thing we want to do is let's set up some code so that we get um, our cursor back if we're in overhead mode um, because we're going to be able to we, we want to be able to edit objects so we have to have a cursor so let's jump over into uh, on enter frame if you remember um, this is the function um, that's called mainly what it's doing here. In fact, the only thing it's doing is it's checking to see whether or not the, the turn has ended and then doing some code. So let's replace this. If you remember, we just created that function that is called turn ends. So uh, turn ends. Okay, so see that makes it a lot more readable. Instead of having that garbage, we can just say if turn ends then and we can jump down in here and do all this code so let's paste in the changes that we are making here so what I've added is um, you know we, we return the ball we do all the dynamics we return the ball to the position it's supposed to be in and then we did this check where we said okay if we're not in overhead mode then we're gonna switch back to the aim camera and then set the crosshair visibility so but here we put in else, so if we are in overhead mode, um, then we'll grab the, the current user and we're going to use that to set the cursor to visible. So if we're in overhead mode, when we go back to the beginning of play, we're going to have a cursor so that we can edit the level. And let's run this again. Okay, let's switch to overhead mode. And if things work the way we want in the code that we just did, when it switches back to the beginning, we should have our cursor visible again. Okay, so the cursor's there, but if you notice, we still have the code in place to keep the um, cursor in the center 
uh, of the screen. So let's jump back over to the code and turn that off. We'll stop that. We'll go back over here to the code. Okay, and the code that we need for that is going to be in the on mouse move. So let's jump over into that. And this is our centering code right here, where if the, the X gets too out of line or the Y gets too out of line, it'll center the mouse. So let's just throw in a uh, conditional here. We're going to say if um, not, let's say if we're not in editing mode, then it's going to go ahead and do this. Otherwise, it should uh, keep the mouse from getting centered. And before I go and uh, check this in the uh, by running the scene, the other thing I can think of right now is that if we make the cursor visible, we want to make sure that it turns invisible again when we launch the ball. So let's come over here to the on button down, because this is uh, where the code is for launching the ball. And so let's just throw in here this little bit of code. So what this does, gets a, a handle to the user and then it uses that handle to set the cur cursor to um, visibility defaults. So let's save that, hit F7 to compile, run over to general, and let's launch this thing. We'll switch to overhead mode. And it should return, we get our cursor back. And now you can see I can move the cursor around. I don't have to worry about it getting recentered. And then when I click my button again, the cursor disappears. Um, so, so far, so good. Um, let's jump back over here. The one thing that, um, that you may have noticed is that when we get the cursor back, though, we're kind of constrained as to what part of the level that we can see. So we may need to um, switch it so that we can scale around in the um, in the viewport so we can see other parts of the level. Okay, so in order to do that we're going to want to go over to the overhead cam AI because that's what controls our overhead cam and that's what we're going to be using to scroll around on the screen. So let's go into the on enter frame which previously had been pretty simple, not a whole lot going on there, it just follows the ball. Let's add this code. All I've done here is I've created a handle to the aim cam. And then I've used the get AI variable to find out what the status of the ball in play is. And then I've also created a handle to the local user that we'll use later. So let's go ahead and change this a little bit. If we want to know if the ball is in play. So if the ball is in play, then we'll go ahead and do the original code here. Let's indent that. Else, we want to create the ability to scroll around. So there's a lot of code here, but basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the cursor position on the screen and I'm feeding that into these local variables X and Y and then I'm just doing some, some simple checks. So if X is less than 10, which is 10% uh, basically of the screen, so this is going to be um, the left side of the screen. So if we're going off, if we're on the left edge of the screen, then we're going to go ahead and call object translate to. So we're going to move the camera, the overhead camera, negative five units in the X direction. And we're going to do this in the local space because what that is going to do, if you remember, is um, that's going to keep everything local to the camera. So if I shift over five units and then on the next frame we come in and we're still over on that left 10% edge of the screen, then it's going to shift over another five units. It'll keep shifting over five units every time it sees the X value there. So we want to keep it in the local space because every time that frame comes up, it basically resets the local space so that we can move over an additional five units if needed. Okay, and then I put the, the time factor here of 0.1, so it's a little, you know, there's kind of a smooth transition. And we're going to do the same thing for um, if we're beyond 90%, so that's going to put us in the right 10%, then it's going to move over to the right. And then we do the same thing for the Y values if we're in the 
top 10% or if we're in the bottom 10% of the screen it's going to scroll around. Now the one thing that you will notice is that even though I am scrolling in what we would be considered the Z axis because I'm going up and down the screen um, instead of coming you know vertically up and down because I have rotated my camera to look down at the at the ball uh, the local Y axis now points along the global Z axis so this is definitely one of those parts if, if you don't remember some of the lessons that or the lesson that we did on global versus local space you may want to go back and, re, and uh, go over that video again just to get familiar with how the local coordinate system differs from the global um, but basically in this case that like I said the camera's Y axis is going to coincide with the global Z axis Anyways, um, you can definitely, you know, if, if you forget that and you start plugging the numbers in the wrong place, you'll quickly find out that you're wrong and can make some adjustments and, you know, all is not lost. So it's not a big deal. All right, so let's save that. We'll hit F7 to compile. Let's jump back over to the game. We'll hit play. Let's switch to overhead mode while the ball is bouncing around. Okay, it comes to rest. But you'll notice that if I go to the bottom of the screen here, it's going to scroll. If I go to the side, it's going to scroll over here, go to the right. So we can scroll around and, and if we had this set up right now, we could grab this object and we could move it to where we want it to be. Um, and then if we hit the button again, it'll jump back over to where the ball was and it's going to follow the ball again. Um, now one thing that we definitely, definitely want to fix is you'll notice that if I am in edit mode and I switch back over to aim mode, um, I have my cursor is visible again and it wasn't centered. It jumps to the center after I start moving around, but it wasn't centered to begin with. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's jump over here to our code. So of course for that, we're gonna want to go to the toggle camera function that we had within the aim cam, because that's what we're trying to do is um, toggle the camera when we have that problem. And this is going to be if we're in overhead mode, so that's this right here, and switching over to aim mode. So let's put this right here. So what it's going to do is after it changes the camera around, then it's going to center the mouse. Um, it's going to get a handle to the, to the user, the current user, and then it's going to set the cursor visible. Um, well, it's going to set cursor visible, but it's going to flag it as false. So we're just going to do the reverse that we just did, we're going to come down here and say, okay, if we're not in overhead mode, um, then once the camera changes, we're going to put this code in here and say, um, you know what, let's take this. I shouldn't have put that there. Let's put it up here at the beginning so that we can access it in both places. So we'll just make the same call, just in fact I'll copy and paste it over. And instead we're going to call this true. Save. Let's just, uh, I'm going to do a quick check here and just see what happens. Just make sure that everything resets back to A mode. Okay. Good, so I think we're done. Um, this is going to set us up for our next video. In our next video we're going to add a few more objects and then we're going to make it possible uh, to go in and move those objects around and um, if we're really ambitious maybe we'll, we'll even set it so that we can rotate the objects um, when we get them into position. So I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Um, hope that uh, this stuff makes sense. It's not, uh, I'm not going too fast. Uh, like I said before, that's the great thing about video. Just go back and review anything. Leave me some comments if you're confused and want some clarification on something, and I'll do my best. Um, check out my web space at subspacegames.com. As always, um, there's a link to the game prototype there, and you can jump in and see the current version. Um, go into the forum um, that's linked off my, my blog, and uh, leave me any feedback about the game. Um, Feel free to click some some ads when you go there to help support um, you know what I'm doing here. It doesn't take a whole lot of money, but um, you know storage space and other things when I'm doing the video, um, I have I do have some minor costs. I mean it's nothing major, but uh, it would be nice if if the project uh, could pay for itself. Um, so you know if you're feeling charitable, just go ahead and click on a few ads. 
Um, 